Hi, I'm Martha Collison, a food writer and recipe creator. And in this series, sponsored by Moosey, I'm going to be showing you some of my favourite weeknight recipes from my own kitchen. With loads of us starting to get back into more of a routine, whether that be back in the office or back to school, it feels more important than ever to have something really interesting for dinner to look forward to. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a delicious vegan chilli. It's a brilliant recipe, particularly if you're trying to eat a little bit less meat, packed full of beans and veggies and loads of little hacks to make it extra flavoursome. This recipe does take a little bit of time to cook on the stove, but it's brilliant for batch cooking. Make it up on a Monday and it will see you all week long on jacket potatoes, in wraps. I'm serving it in tacos, it's super versatile. So to start off with, we need an onion. I quite like my chilli to have quite a lot of texture, so I'm not going to chop them super fine. Living in Brighton, we have lots of vegan friends, so this is a great dish to serve up when they come over. And actually, it's a really nice midweek meal to have, even if you're not vegan. Now I'm going to get these straight into the pan to start softening. So we're just going to leave those onions to soften for about 8 to 10 minutes. So next up for our chilli, we obviously need some chilies. So I have got some ancho chilies that I'm going to be using for the base of my chilli. Um, these have got such a lovely smoky flavour and they've been dried out so they're really easy to keep in your cupboard, you haven't got to have too many fresh ingredients in. So what you want to do with these is break them up into a small bowl, just tear them into small-ish pieces. They've got a really nice fruity flavour and they're quite a mild chilli so this might look like a lot but don't worry, they're not super spicy. It's nice to use a few different types of spice in this kind of chilli because it just builds those nice layers of flavour. So now it's time to rehydrate them. I've got some boiling water. I'm just going to pour about 75 millilitres over the chilies. So I'm just going to set this to one side to let all those lovely flavours soak in. If you'd like to see the full recipe, the link is in the video description. So the next step is our coriander and our garlic. Now I've got a nice big bunch of coriander. We're going to be using the leaves to garnish, but the stalks often get wasted, but they're brilliant, full of flavour, so I like to put them in with my onions to soften. So I'm just going to finely chop those up. It's a brilliant way not to waste any part of this dish. And then once you're up near the leafy end, we'll set this to one side and we'll use this at the end. So next up is our garlic. I've got three cloves of garlic going in and you can either finely chop these or I'm going to use a little grater just to get it really nice and finely ground. Chilli was something that we definitely had a lot when I was growing up. My mum would make an amazing version, really slow cooked with big pieces of meat. But this is a really good speedy version. So now we're going to add in our spices. Now good chilli has to have a good spice base. So I've got one teaspoon of smoked paprika and then half a teaspoon of both ground coriander, ground cumin. Stir that all together. And we're just gonna let those spices fry for a minute or so until they're lovely and aromatic. Look at that color. So next up, we need the bulk of our chili, which is our beans. So I'm starting off with a can of kidney beans. These are classic in a chili. But let's sprinkle those in. And then because you want to vary that texture, we're going to be using three different kinds of beans slash lentils. So next up, I've got some black beans. These are slightly smaller than the kidney beans, so create a really nice texture. You can pretty much use any kinds of beans that you like for this, or you could soak your own dry ones overnight, just the night before. And then the final thing we've got is some beluga lentils, much smaller than the beans, but this makes the sauce really nice and luscious. In they go. So now it's time for the tomatoes. Good quality tin tomatoes make a real difference in this dish. I'm using these finely chopped ones by Muti. They've been picked at the height of summer, so they're really delicious with loads of flavour. And the texture is nice and thick because it's got the pulpy part as well as the tomato juice in there. The tomatoes have been really finely chopped, so they're perfect for a longer cooking time, like in this dish. And then I've got some double concentrated tomato puree. This is going to really enhance the tomatoiness of our chilli. So next up, we've got some chipotle paste. This is a really powerful little flavour bomb. It's got a lovely smoky flavour. And this is if you want to dial back the heat a little bit, put a little bit less of this in. And if you like it really hot, go with a bit more. But I'm going to go for one teaspoon. So next up, we have got some marmite. This is really salty, but also has a really deep, rich umami flavour, which adds a lovely kind of meatiness to this vegan chilli. I've put my metal spoon into some boiling water just so it slides off really easily. And we're not going to be adding any extra salt, so this is where all of the seasoning will come from. And then finally, we've got our soaked chilies. You can see the liquid is really rich in colour. 
and will be really intense in flavour as well. And now it's time to give it all a good mix together. Some people wrongly think that vegan food is a bit bland because you haven't got the meat to give all that flavour, but actually this dish has got so many layers of flavour and so many spices that it's really interesting to eat. So now the lid's going to go on and this is going to cook for 25 minutes. The chilli is simmering away, now I'm going to prepare the pepper that I'm going to put in next. I quite like to put the pepper in slightly later because I like it to retain a bit of its crunch, add a bit of texture. So I'm just going to remove the seeds from the pepper, I like to just cut it in half and then pull out the centre so you don't waste any of the flesh. So I'm just going to finely chop these into little chunks. This is a brilliant recipe to batch cook, it freezes really well and it keeps in the fridge for ages as well. So the chilli has been bubbling away for about 25 minutes. The beans have begun to soften, it's looking really nice and thick. So we're going to add in our pepper and I'm going to give this a mix to combine it just so that pepper can gently cook. I'm just going to leave that to cook for about 20 minutes with the lid off so it can thicken into a texture which is perfect for spooning into our tacos. So our chilli has bubbled away, the peppers are cooked and the sauce is looking really lovely. So we're just going to finish it off with a few more ingredients. So first up, I've got some dark chocolate. Now this is always my secret ingredient in a chilli. It gives it a really nice, rich depth of flavour. You want to use something that's 70% plus and double check that it's vegan if that's something that you are looking out for. It adds a really lovely bitterness, um, which works really beautifully with the beans. So tip that in. And then we're just going to stir and it will melt in the residual heat of the chilli. And we're just going to finish it off with a little bit of freshness. So I've got a lime, I'm going to roll it just to make sure we can release all of that juice and let's slice them in half and squeeze in all that juice. You can give it a taste here and see whether you think it needs more or less lime, season it with salt and pepper, whatever floats your boat and let's give that a final mix. So now I'm going to set this to one side and keep it warm whilst I make my tacos. You can have these just as a plain soft tortilla wrap, but I quite like the crunch to go alongside the chilli. It's really simple to make a taco. You simply want to take a tortilla wrap, make sure you've got your oven rack out of the oven so it's nice and cool. And then we're gonna drape the wrap over a couple of the rungs. You wanna drape them over so they hang down evenly and they'll do some magic in the oven and crisp into your traditional tacos. And then these are going to go into the oven for about eight minutes until they're nice and crisp. I'm going to be serving my tacos with some avocado, so I'm going to slice this ripe avocado up into little chunks. I also like to serve them up with some vegan yogurt, or if you're not vegan, you can use regular yogurt, and a bit of feta cheese is really nice as well. So I've got my chili ready to go, looking lovely and luscious. And now I'm going to grab my tacos out of the oven. So these are nice and hot out of the oven. I've got everything I need to put together my vegan chilli tacos and I've got loads of chilli left over to see me through the rest of the week. <laughs> <laughs>